Okay. Our last thesis presentation is Haley Sawyer. She's a senior communications major, and her title is Hail to RMU, a football documentary. So um, if we could go to the next slide, um, we have a teaser for the actual documentary. There should be like a little play button. Um, you know, when someone drops a ball, misses a block, you know, whatever it is, just pick each other up. Bow, get it. Got it. Good. So it was a two-part documentary series on the RMU football team. It took place over two years. Um, I co-produced it along with Alec. Um, we moved in early and attended the bulk of training camp with the football team in the preseason. Season one ended up coming to one hour, which is a little bit longer than we would want it to be, and season two was 20 minutes. We wanted to do this because of, of that guy, the one yelling, that's, that's Coach Banizak. Um, he took over last year and it was really an important part of Robert Morris football history because it was a brand new head coach, a lot of other new coaches, brand new offensive scheme, new uniforms, everything was changing and we just wanted to preserve the transitionary phase that was going on because it's really important to preserve a culture, especially in sports, which changes so rapidly. We had some concerns before we started this project. Um, blending in with the team was our number one concern because we didn't want the players to freak out with unfamiliar people there. We didn't want them to act differently around the cameras or anything like that. So we were very nervous about that. And we also wanted to earn trust with everybody who's involved with the team, not just the players, but the coaches, because we knew if we earned that trust, we would get more access and more responsibilities. They would let us do more things. We wanted to let them know that we weren't there to sabotage their reputation. So in order to prepare, we put together a list of needs, wants, and flexibles, things that we absolutely needed, um, wants, things that we really wanted, like locker room access, things that are not always attainable, and we also had some flexibles, so things that we wanted, but we'd be okay if we didn't get them. We had to learn the team from the ground up because we had some involvement with the team through um, student media before, but we really didn't know anything about the team at all, so we had to learn everything from square one, the coaches, players, um, different situations they were going through, and all the storylines too. Um, in order to get the ball rolling, we wrote up some treatments and we sent it off to the sports information director, Spencer, who so graciously set us up with the head coach for some meetings. So we had to present our ideas, um, different analytics, who would be seeing the product, things like that. And we also had to keep everyone on the same page. In planning everything, it was kind of difficult because I live five hours from here. Um, Alec lived in Pittsburgh. We had some other crew members who were just scattered around the state. So keeping everybody on the same page and keeping those open lines of communication was really important. Filming, shooting was obviously a huge part of the project. project. Um, Alec did most of the shooting, but we also expanded our crew. Um, for the second season, we had two main cameramen, and then we added a third one as well. So it was really nice to have those extra eyes on the field. This was a typical schedule. Uh, seven o'clock was a morning practice, so I'd get up around six o'clock over summer, so it was a good time. Um, so we'd go to morning practice, and then after that was over, we'd have a break. Um, and then we'd go to the afternoon practice, do the same thing, we'd shoot different things, we'd have different objectives to do for the day. Say maybe we wanted to shoot this one tight end who had a really good season last season. So we would shoot him or we'd have different things that we'd want to do. Um, we'd also have another break after that and then we'd have meetings. So for most of the meetings we would go set up a camera in the back and just straight up film the meetings. Breaks were really important, probably more important than shooting itself because we used them as opportunities to do miscellaneous work like um, dumping footage, um, writing scripts, 
creating storylines, doing more research, really anything. And sometimes we actually took breaks. Um, <laughs> taking breaks was really important because the days are just, as you can see, six in the morning to like 10 o'clock at night. It's so long, it's so hot out there sometimes. I had a DSLR camera turn off on me one time because it couldn't take the temperature. <laughs> we tried a few different techniques um, in this project. Um, miking up players was something that was a whole lot of fun but took a while to perfect. Um, we, had, we used wireless mic packs so we would attach them to the players. Um, so we'd have to have durability, number one. As you can see, we mic'd up. This is Andy Smigera, um, a defensive back, and he's, he's always running really fast, hitting things, as you can tell. So we worked with the head equipment manager of the football team, and I would get up, and um, I'd get up extra early, go see the equipment manager before practice even started. He would take the, the pads and the equipment, and I'd give him the mic pack, and he would set it up so that nobody else but that player and the equipment trainer would know that he was the one mic'd up, which really cut down on like different distractions, especially because you know once a guy knows he's mic'd up, like what would you guys do? You just like screw around the whole time. And we didn't want that to happen, so that's why we were so secretive about it. Um, we also tried using a GoPro, which didn't work out as well as we had expected. Um, <laughs> Alec is laughing. Um, but yeah, we, we put a GoPro on one of the quarterbacks during a scrimmage and <laughs> we got like warm ups. And then he thought that the camera wasn't working. So he brings it over to us and he's like, this isn't working. So I'll take partial responsibility because I let this happen. But someone pressed a button and stopped recording. So that was a really great learning experience with technology for us. <laughs> Um, interviews. We talked to a lot of people, especially in that first season, because we had to get to know the team from square one. So we, near, we interviewed nearly everybody on the team, players, coaches, staff members, whoever we could get a hold of to learn about the team. Um, I learned a lot of things about interviewing, um, which was really important to my career as a sports writer. Um, I learned that if you interviewed the subject last, like for example, this is Matt Barr. Um, if you guys are familiar with him, he was the starting quarterback for most of the season this year. Um, I learned that if you talk to other sources about your main subject first, you were most likely to get the most information out of that because you never know what kind of anecdotes, funny things, different facts that they are going to tell you that you can use in your main interview later. I also learned that there's different pressure points in interview subjects. Um, depending on what you say, um, they, they will react differently. And I learned how to kind of like read body language, um, what could upset them if I say this, what will make them talk more if I say that. So just reading people, it's, it's something you can't learn in a classroom and you just have to learn from doing over and over again. And it took a whole lot of research, as I mentioned before, to do all of these interviews and eventually um, as far as scheduling goes for the interviews, we organized a lot of them on our own, which was great because when we first started, um, we had to go through the sports information department, ask the different coaches, go through all these people to get these interviews. But by the end of the camp, they were just like, yeah, go ahead, do whatever. We trust you to interview these people and schedule these on your own time. Um, different locations and lighting was used for the different interviews. Um, this was a more casual, fun interview. Um, and you can tell that it's casual and fun because it's, they're sitting very casually, they're on a bench, um, it's, it's daylight, we didn't light it at all, it's a two shot, just very casual and relaxed. Um, so like picking the scene was really important to what kind of message we wanted to, wanted to convey. Um, like if we talk to a linebacker, we might want the sleds in the background and we want to do it outside. Or if we talk to a tight end, we'd want the goalpost in the background because we want them to score. Next. Um, or if we wanted to do something more intense, um, this was a little bit more intense, we talked about in this interview, like the failure of last season, essentially. So we took him inside the locker room, we, we dimmed the lighting, we lit it particularly to make it a little bit more dramatic and intense. The script was probably one of the longest and most difficult processes for me. Um, I started out with a pre-script. Um, I did a stream of consciousness exercise, which is, I don't know if you guys have ever taken creative writing classes, but they do that a lot. Um, what you do is you just write down a lot of words that you think of when you think of the football team. So it was just like page upon page of just words that I wanted to use. And after I had all those words down, I put together outlines and episode outlines to see what I wanted to use and what I didn't use. Once it was written, I sent it to um, Tess Berry. I don't know if you guys know her. She's an adjunct here and a published poet. So she looked through everything and make sure, made sure it was fine and I showed it to the crew and everything as well. 
And when it came to finding a narrator, we wanted someone with a deep dramatic voice. Um, so for season one, we used um, a student. And then for season two, we actually used um, the RMU radio graduate assistant who has like a really deep dramatic Morgan Freeman-esque voice, if you will. <laughs> Um, promotion was very important, probably one of the last things that we did with the project. Word of mouth was particularly important. I'm a sports writer, I write for the Beaver County Times and the Tribune Review, so every time I talk to a football coach or someone involved in football, I'd be like, you need to watch this because I wanted our view counts up, number one. Um, but yeah, just pushing it as much as I could on other people because I believe in the product and I want as many people to see it as possible. We also use social media a whole lot. Um, we promoted it on our personal Twitters if we had them. Um, RMU Century Media posted it and um, we worked with Alan Bueller from RMU who put it on a bunch of different Facebook pages and things of that nature. Um, we also found that this is the initial tweet. It did fairly well with the episode and I pinned it to the top of my, my Twitter so everyone could see it. Um, you can see the impressions and engagements there. We found that Photo, video, and text all perform differently on social media. Video performed the best. As you can see, all the impressions, there's a few thousand there. And there's actually a sample of the video that we use in the next slide. So you could play that. We used 15 minutes. On training day, I go too hard. hard. Yeah, go ahead. On training day, I go too hard. Ask Antoine, who I am Godzilla of these favelas. New car. Flow, flow. Won't you? Um, we also use photo, which is on the next slide. Okay. Oh. Anyway, we also did photo, um, which performed about in the middle, and then we did text, which performed the worst. Um, so we tried to get as much of a variety as we could, as long as it was exclusive content from practices, things like that. And in conclusion, all right, in conclusion, um, I had a lot of personal and professional development during this project. Um, organizational skills was probably the top thing. I managed like five different people, four or five different people at a time, making sure everyone was on the same page, things of that nature, really keeping everyone cohesive was super important. And then I also learned about the game of football and the culture of football itself, which is pretty special. <laughs> Thanks.